On the weekend, we saw some exciting racing with the addition of Lionel Sanders in the Super League Triathlon event. And we saw in the race that he had an incredible bike, an incredible run, and it was the swim that let him down. Now in this video, I wanna give my two cents on what I can see with his technique. And if I were him, what would I focus on? And it's one thing from knowing what to do to then being able to do it and make those changes. And am I no means criticizing here or thinking that I've got the answers? I just wanna give my take on his technique because I think he's an incredible athlete. I really enjoy watching his videos. And I think that he has such determination and grit that it is a very exciting addition to the sport of triathlon as a whole, especially when he's willing to come down from Ironman distance racing down to the Super League format, which is very short, fast, punchy racing, very different type of event. So it made for a very exciting race. And in this video, I just wanna give my take on his technique. So let's take a look. Now we saw in the event, it was 200 meter swims. And for both 200 meter swims, he did two minutes 30. So an average of 115. The other swimmers from what I could tell were averaging from around 102 pace up to about 110 pace. Most of them seem to be around about a 204 to 215 in terms of their 200 times. Now these guys are very good swimmers. They're very quick. They can race in that super league format well. So it's a different thing coming from that Ironman background, which is you know, primarily endurance. Uh, but there were some things that I could notice in Lionel Stroke that if I was him, I think this is what I'd be looking to focus on. When we're thinking about improving technique, we want to have a structure. What's the order of things that we should work on? And with freestyle, with swimming in general, we need to start with the body, the head, and then the kick. They need to be put in place first. Now, in terms of the, the body, one thing that you could see here compared to some of the other athletes is the hips do sit a little bit low. And I think the reason for that is, is purely the, the head position. So we do see here, if we're looking at Lionel, the hips are sitting just a bit further below the surface than you can see with the athlete out further. So if you're looking at this swimmer up here, you can see that he's sitting a little bit higher with the hips. Now, I believe that the reason that he's sitting that little bit lower is the head position. He does swim with a very high head now, sometimes that's just purely habit from siding in the open water. But this position where we've got the line of the body and then the head sitting up a lot higher, it's something that I find creates a lot of lower back arch, more lower back arch than what is ideal. And it just tends to sit the hips a bit low. So you can see that his goggles are almost out of the water at this point, the whole heads, so the whole top half of the head is out of the water. So it does cause that lower back arch, hips to sit a bit low. Then we get a little bit of this snaking side to side and you lose some of that streamlined position through the body. So you might see it here as we just slow this down. Having a look at this through his body, you'll see there's sort of more of this side to side wiggle than what you, know, what you may see with some of the, the other swimmers. So I'll just start there. We need to get the body head, get the kick right. Now, one other thing that I saw with the kick was occasionally, especially this first lap, that the feet were coming quite high out of the water. So the whole foot there, you can see, is leaving the water. And then we did get it on a few other strokes as well. Yeah, a little bit there. Now, not the worst thing in the world, but we do find when someone lifts their whole foot out of the water, sometimes they tend to thump that foot down. So it's like this big doo -doo, doo -doo, happening out the back. And you can also hear it. Occasionally I'll be filming someone and you can hear their kick having this big thumping sound out the back. Now that slows you down a little bit. It creates a little bit of extra drag when we're hit getting this thumping noise. And that's usually when the whole foot leaves the water. It's good to have the heels breaking the surface, but not the whole foot. So we generally wanna try and just keep the feet under the water, heels can break it, and just smooth out that kick a little bit. And my guess is, look, it's probably just from that head lift coming up high where the, the foot's probably just then sort of coming out the back there. It's, it's probably stemming from that. So with a bit more tautness and stability through the body, I'd be thinking that he can, uh, he can just adjust each of those things. He can improve each of those things. The second thing that I noticed here was what the arms are doing over and under the water. And the thing that sort of stood out to me was with a little bit of a better path under the body and over the water on one side, I feel like you could get a lot more from his stroke. So you see here with the recovery where 
as he's bringing his left arm over the water, it's coming over quite wide. So there's essentially no bend in the elbow and it's very flat, very close to the surface of the water. Now, I am certainly not someone who thinks you should come over with a very high elbow, you know, traditional sort of what you think of as like a traditional freestyle stroke, super high elbow. You do not need that, especially in triathlon. A lot of the swimmers I coach will wear wetsuits when they're racing. And so sometimes it just doesn't really allow for that. It's not as comfortable. However, I would say a good recovery as being just a little bit higher with the elbow and not quite so low and especially not quite so wide coming around there. Because what I can see happening is that with this low and wide recovery, the right arm in the water is very wide and straight through there. Now, something that I've come to realize is that usually when the, that, uh, the hand is wider than the elbow under the body there, it's a lot weaker. It doesn't allow you to use your lats very well through that movement because you're much stronger when the hand is on the inside of the elbow right here. And I would compare that to if you were standing on the side of the pool and you went to push yourself out of the water, you wouldn't do it with your hands out wider than your elbow. You'd probably struggle to get out. You would do it with your hands on the inside of your elbow, narrower than them. So you'd be pushing out that way. Then you can use these stronger muscles through your back and shoulder. So it, it does look like those two things are related. Wide over here, then wide under the body. And then we get that, that happening. And it sort of brings things out much wider. Whereas with freestyle, we want to try and keep it somewhat central. And that just makes it much more efficient coming through the water. Now we do get a really good look at this with uh, another swimmer. So this swimmer here who's next swim, or sorry, this triathlete who's next swim, you'll see with his non-breathing arm recovery, he's not really high with it. His elbow's up, his fingers are there. So he's still coming somewhat wide, but he's got a bit more bend in that elbow as he's coming through. Now you can see with this arm, even though it's a little bit difficult to see, the he's getting this nice bend in the elbow where the elbow is the widest part, the hands on the inside. That is where you're strong. That's hitting that power diamond that you may have seen in some of our videos that we talk about in the catch challenge, where that is where you've got much more strength. And the other benefit to that too is that hand is now under his body or closer to being under his body, I should say. And that can be much more direct at sending you forwards. So, you know, chicken or the egg, what's causing uh, what there? Is it because of that wide recovery that he's maybe coming wide or is it because he's pulling wide that's causing him to go wide above? I'm not sure. But either way, that would be something that I'd be looking to just make some adjustments to because there's so much more available from each stroke in terms of distance per stroke, better hold, better feel for the water when those two things are, are in place. So that would be the second thing. Now, the third thing that uh, we can see here, and this would be the third thing I'd correct because we want to make sure we work on things in the right order, is as he goes through his, through his catch on his, on his left side, that, um, well, so the shoulder, he's still sort of looking, he's looking back sort of behind him there, perhaps a bit far, and the shoulders at that point are probably just over-rotating a bit. Now, over-rotation to me, if we're looking front on, it's more than about 45 degrees through the shoulders. And it certainly looks like at this point that the shoulders are just going beyond that, probably to, a, to 60 degrees, perhaps 70 degrees rotation on the side. And that's where we get a position where it's a little bit like this. Shoulders are still on the side as he's going through his catch and his pull. And if you're still too far on the side through this catch and pull motion, you don't connect up this movement of the catch very well. You don't connect up that movement of the catch uh, very well with the rest of the body. So to have that connection from this arm moving with the rotation of the body, we just need that timing to be a little bit different where we'd want to be coming back to flat, coming back to the other side, I should say, um, just a bit earlier on. And here I reckon because of that over rotation, as he turns to breathe, that, um, that we're just sort of seeing that, um, that slightly out of time. And it just means you don't get as much out of that breathing arm catch in the water. So they're the main things that I could, uh, could notice here. And, you know, there's no uh, aerobic reason why that can't be done because physically, you know, aerobically, probably the, the fittest one there. And in terms of technique, in terms of, you know, just refining the stroke, it can be, it can be a challenge to undo some things that you've done for many years. Sometimes it requires you to go a bit slower to go faster. 
And yeah, it, it is certainly a difficult thing to do, but it can be done.